the chase and uh, just kind of go ahead and get our friends out here. Are you guys ready to give them all a huge, warm welcome? <laughs> Fantastic. I'm curious who's backstage. Hey, 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 Peter, are you backstage right now? Peter, can you come on out? You're coming? Take your time. You're good. It's good. No one's waiting. You're fine. He's got behind the door. Where are you at? Here you make it, everyone. Come on down, my friend. Another friend of our show here at Dragon Con, Mark. Mark, are you back there? Mark, you want to come on out and hang out with us for a little while? Good morning. Good morning. And our last friend who's going to join us today and hang out for the next hour is our friend Adrian. Adrian, you want to come on out? Come on out, Adrian. Good morning, everyone. Morning. How are you guys holding up so far? Just getting started, though, right? Ooh, it was a night last night. Yeah? Idea. Yeah. You already, you already hit the floor hard. And Peter and I were up pretty late. Oh, yeah. Idea. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised Peter made it. Peter, thank you for... Uh, he just hasn't stopped. Yeah, 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 I was a little curious. I, have you been going all night? It's none of your damn business. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right answer. That's the absolute right answer. So one of the things that we celebrate here at Dragon Con is a number of different fandoms. Everything's got a home here. And I just kind of want to get to know you guys a little bit and kind of want to know if you were here hanging out, just doing you, what kind of geeky things are you into in your day-to-day -day life? My day-to-day -day life? Day-to-life, yeah. Or here, you name it. I just want to know where your nerdy traits are. Well, I mean, I love comic books. Does that count? Yeah, that's everything counts. <laughs> yeah. What kind of comic books are you going to dive into? Well, probably something my brother wrote. Oh, that's very valid. Yeah, okay, I walked Fair, fair, fair. Uh, Eric Wilkie is great. Yeah. Um, no, but I just, I love, I love female superheroes, obviously. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'm a huge X-Men fan, so. Oh, what, was there a particular time of X-Men where you're like, this is where I'm getting in? Well, I wanted to play Rogue, like, forever. Not yeah. that I would ever play something. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird, the rules right now, guys. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> that would be a dream. That would be fantastic. Yes. Cool. I'm getting too old, though. Yeah. <laughs> not, not in this house. We're gonna <laughs> celebrate it all. Come on out. Put on some cosplay. Let's have a party. There you go. Cool. Mark, what about you? What is your nerdy uh, choice of life? Uh, well, I'm a sci-fi fan. Always have been. Yeah. Uh, Trekkie. Big uh, TNG fan. Back in the day. Oh, wait. Why did I say that? We're not... We're, yeah. We'll, we'll get right. We'll keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, keep that in mind. Do you like reading sci-fi? Yeah. Use vowels. Don't Use vowels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I. Um, <laughs> big fan of Ian M. Banks. If anyone's ever read any of his oh, work, yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, and I do like. I if I was just here at the con, yeah. and not like here at the con, right? Then um, I, I'd like wandering around because I do enjoy that mishmash of different shows and genres. Yeah. I picked up a little badge at a con in Chicago and it was a Grogu, Grogu Nigori. <laughs> it was just so random. <laughs> um, but I loved it. And uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. Awesome. All right, Peter, what about you? Well, um, we have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. Oh, wow. So I basically watch what they watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's their current obsession right now? Uh, uh, I think I've seen like the new Super Mario Brothers movie like about eight, eight two times. <laughs> <laughs> I got catch up uh, for me. Wow. <laughs> I've not seen it at all. Oh, oh god! Right, we're yeah, we're around your house. house. Yeah, I mean, we have a good time. Yeah, I'll take over the eighty first. You can take the eighty second. <laughs> that would be awesome. I, I, and then I, I sit up and watch, like I've been watching, uh, we have all this cable, right? We have like, you know, all the, all the stuff, and I'm still watching movies that have commercials. <laughs> watching TNT, right. uh, it's a T I guess like or, uh, the, the Star Wars, uh, you know, series has been on, um, all of the, you know, the Avengers stuff, I'm just, you know. It's, it's co comfort stuff, right? You get, you kind of go to what you know. Yeah, like, why? Because it's too much trouble to go to Netflix and find anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just watch what's yeah. on. By the time you figure out what you want to watch, it's You're like, done. you know, three hours later. Yeah. yeah. No, just... the, the two hardest decisions in our household is, is deciding where to go get dinner and what to watch that night. It's like, all right, cool, here's an hour of our life, and now I'm exhausted. You know, it's overwhelming. You know, it's a lot of choice. But that's, a, that's a, it's a, it makes it also kind of an interesting time to be a, 
a participant in geek culture and just be like, there is something everywhere for everyone. And so it's really awesome that, you know, from cosplay and comic books to deep sci-fi cuts and all that, like we all have a home here. And I just, it's hugely cool that we get to celebrate that. So thank you guys for kind of like sharing and kind of connecting us in that way. So I want to kind of get things rolling a little bit. Um, you're going to see some really weird insights in how these panels are happening at the convention this year. Um, we're going to do things a little bit differently with my particular shows this year. So I've got this giant thing. <laughs> Are you, are you putting together what we're going to do here in this next hour? So I'm going to toss this out into the audience. We're going to bounce it around like a beach ball. Um, keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to do it. We're, we're going to count you down. We're going to have a little bit of time. We're going to count down like five, four, three, two, one. When you have this, if you have this at the end, step on out into the aisle, give it a nice roll, yell out what number that is. I've got a list of questions up here that we are going to ask based off of what all of you are rolling. So I'm hoping the chaos factor just goes through the roof. Uh, this is literally the first time I'm doing this because obviously it's the first one of the show. I hope it's good. Um, please don't pop this. <laughs> uh, otherwise, it's going to be a long weekend for me. So uh, are you guys ready to kind of see what our audience gives you guys? Yes. All right. In the spirit of Bob Barker. <laughs> it is a you guys. Bounce it around, light touches. It is not a volleyball, okay? All right, here we go. I'm going to toss that to you guys. All right, start it down. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold it. You got it. All right, come on out. Yeah, wait, it kind of bounces up. You get to pick one genre of movie for the rest of your life. This is the only genre of movie that you get to watch for the rest of your life. What genre is that? Comedy. For sure. Yeah, I think I'll say that. I was going to say sci-fi, but I reckon it gets, it would be a bit intense. But I'm going to go for comedy. Yeah. Get enough for eternity. Oh, man. <clears throat> For it's for for that's how you get the watch. <laughs> forever, for and forever. Ever. I'm gonna go with like Cinemax. I would say you're painting a clear picture there, but uh, so what? So why comedy then? Why comedy? Why, why is that your comfort genre? I love laughing more than anything yeah. in the world. So, also, I mean, if you think about if you're like watching drama forever, how depressed you would be. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I love the comic book movies and things like that, but I think also that gets to a point where it's like, that's just too much. It kind of works. Yeah. You, you want to laugh? Yeah. yeah. You need, like, escapism is important, but right. it's not just escapism. You need yes. the comedy. You need the laughter. Exactly. Yeah. It's like when I can't figure out what to watch on Netflix, I just end up watching Friends. <laughs> for the 20 million times. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. Well, I think, if you can't watch anything else for the rest of your life, you're going to need to pick up, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so comedy, yeah. But also, I mean, you know, on a very, like, very professional kind of actor, we know. Um, <laughs> comedy is probably the best uh, vehicle for most things, isn't it? Yeah. You, can, you can get a lot across with comedy. A lot of truth. Um, so, yeah, it's a very flexible, accommodating genre. Okay. I think my answer is inclusive to that too because there's a lot of, there's a lot of comedy in those soft core like that the world. Maybe not on purpose. Yeah. 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 It's David yeah. Jacoby is somewhere laughing. I'm, I'm you're, 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 you're. <laughs> entertaining on lots of different you know, yeah. things. I'm just saying, I won't be bored. <laughs> I love that you're not kidding too. It's yeah. Okay. That's true. <laughs> 
I don't think it would get old, Peter. It never gets old. No? <laughs> never gets old. The variety of the storylines. say the storyline, though. Like, but you know, there's a range of performers, the actresses, the actors. Are like, you know, you see someone just starting out, and like, this is their first time. Like, with, like, Follow their career. You have your favorites. <laughs> yeah, cool music. You know, it's great, like, you know, the, the DPs are starting you know, it's like, there's a lot to pick apart. I mean, they're, they're underrated, I'm just saying. <laughs> Well, well, that note, where is our D20 right now? Let's kind of see where we are. All right, so someone just toss it around. All right, bounce it over. Watch your head. <laughs> it's okay, it's flat. All right, five, four, three, three two, two, one. All right, two, hold it. Three. Come on out. Look how happy he is. Pop, pop it open a little bit. All right, give it a good roll. Oh, God, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Please be mindful of your neighbors. Please and thank you. All right. Thirteen. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. All right, guys. Okay. This is a weird one. And I'm already uh, curious to see what Peter's going to say. <laughs> I, have a note, I have a note here for this question that says, please keep it PG. Um, uh -oh. What's the weirdest thing that you have spotted in someone else's home? You're hanging out with a friend, and you're like, what the hell is that? Peter? <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's like, I gotta go, I gotta go. I've lived a very full life. Uh, <laughs> Were they watching Cinema You guys too? go first. <laughs> oh. Uh... I, I love this. this yeah. is, uh, yeah. you're, you're, oh, the weirdest thing you've seen. You're the weirdest really thing. Really good question. Because it's the kind of thing you spot, think about, and you think, oh, I'm going to tell someone about that. And yeah, you forget to do it. Yeah. This yeah. is your chance to tell everyone. Or, or, you see something like, I am never yeah. telling anyone. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that little part of your mind that you oh, just it out. Like, did you, uh, let me qualify this one. Let I felt one. Okay, alright. So my parents used to live in. New Orleans, or New Orleans, as we say right here. And, um... New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Thanks, y'all. And I'd, I'd, I'd go there as much as I could, because it's so cool. And uh, I was there for Mardi Gras one year, and I had a friend who was like, I'll come to this... Um, in the French Quarter, I know this guy, he's, yeah, and I'm, I'm house-sitting for him. And he's got this, like, mansion in the French Quarter. He's got a pool, we're gonna have a pool party. Anyway, I go to this pool party. It ends up going on for about three days, and I'm kind of wandering around it for three days, and it's very fun. And at one point, I, I, I like I need to go to the bathroom, so I, I'm in this maze of corridors, and I, I end up finding this toilet. And I walk in, and not only is the toilet completely gold, everything is gold. There is also a cat on the toilet having a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't think you can. No, I think mean, that's like a golden one right there. That story. Yeah. I mean, that I will never be able to unsee that. No, that's in my mind. Yeah. No, can I? I kind of wish I had. You know what I mean? Like, I, I would have been there. Put it into chat GPT and it will come up for you, I think. <laughs> Is there a bidet? I got out of there pretty quickly. <laughs> I certainly wasn't going to go in after it. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard act to follow. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, that's fair. Do you guys know the artist Louise Nevelson? She's a she's a sculptor uh, from like I think uh, a Russian sculptor from I want to say the sixties. Uh, you know, like you know, uh, abstract expressionist movement. Anyway, uh, so I went to art school in San Francisco and uh, lived in this loft, and we inherited like these. Louise Nevelson esque sculptures, and so what her sculptures were like was that she would just take found pieces of wood, you know, and and put them all together and assembled them, and then paint it all black, right? And so some of them were quite tall, you know, thirteen feet tall. Um, so we had like these amazing sculptures. They weren't Louise Nevelson sculptures, but like they were inspired by her work. And um, uh, so. Somehow or another, we wound up going over to the guys, the artist's house who created these sculptures, and he lived uh, in this giant Victorian house, um, and you know, collected bowling balls and glass from, like, shattered glass from bus stops, and his his whole house and backyard 
was fun. He made these amazing sculptures. So inside his house, like he had, he, he basically was building these sculptures inside the house. So he literally had to like scooch to get around, you know, like it was like artistic hoarding, you know, it was like <laughs> design inside. Anyway, the guy was a bit cuckoo. Um, but he had like 13 hairless cats. <laughs> and, and so you, you make your way through this maze. I'm like, I can't believe this guy lives like this. And then to put the cherry on the top of the weirdness, we're sitting there and out come these hairless cats. I've never seen a hairless cat in person and it's really unnerving. It's like <laughs> giant rats, but like, and they smell really bad. And, but they're just as, as, as affectionate as, you know, cats with hair. Yeah, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know if they don't have hair. They don't know if it's weird for them to not have hair. And yeah. they're just, and he's just in the middle and it was feeding time. And he's just sitting down. He slept in the turret. <laughs> Cuckoo. Um, and they just, you know, they were just all over him, and he's feeding them. And, and I was just like, this is disturbing. Okay. I'm never going to forget this. So I'm glad you asked. I just wanted to share. Yeah, yeah. Think of that. There's a pattern here. One cat. Cats. Story. There's cats. I walked in a sex room, and, and they were, you know, filled with cats. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> Some had hair or something? Yeah. The humans? We're gonna take that <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to get an audience question from uh, someone from Discord right now. Uh, Kimber, I believe it's um, no pronunciation right there. Cool, you're here. Awesome. Uh, since we're on the kind of conversation of uncomfortable, is there something that makes you uncomfortable that you're able to deliver for? As an actor, what makes you uncomfortable and how do you use it in your craft? And the rest is silence. This. We had much coffee this morning, I think. I don't, I mean, I like uncomfortable. I, I like live being in yeah. uncomfortable life. I mean, there's nerves, isn't there? Isn't there sometimes? Mm -hmm. there's like, I like going through the fear because I think it's the, the way you grow, right? Yeah. If it's safe, it's usually boring. And there's, no it's, there's no challenge. You don't there's learn. Stakes. There's no stakes. Yeah. It's good to have that flutter. Yes. Mm -hmm. That kind of gets you, it focuses you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uncomfortable, well, the uncomfortable implies something that is, is happening that shouldn't be happening, right? Or like... Mark's world. Or like... <laughs> or like, I don't know when I'm going to get my lunch. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'll say intimate scenes are weird. They can, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, you're literally like, you're... Pretending to have these moments with somebody, and there's a bunch of people behind you watching, and you're like, "This is supposed to be really sexy right now," but it just, you know, nothing about it. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's very odd. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's well handled, isn't it? Oh yes, very yeah. well handled. Yeah, but it's still crazy. Yeah. You know, like to, uh, you know, I mean, I did this photo shoot with this woman. It's like, "Oh hi, how you doing? We're going to be having sex." Um, not, but not really. <laughs> and, and people are in some taking pictures. And it was for like an, an HIV campaign, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, I was just like, this is the weirdest shit ever. Right. <laughs> to, to be like, to, you know, cause it, and, and, or, or, or to, to have like on, on screen, you know, um, you know, a, 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 a intimate scene. And you have to, and I'm like, all right, is my mom yeah. gonna watch this? Or is it? There's definitely my wife. That awareness. Like, you, like, it's so strange. It's yeah. a good point, actually. And I don't, so, a few years ago, I, quite a long time ago, maybe about eight, nine years ago, I auditioned for um, a commercial. Commercial auditions are, I mean, we've probably not done them for a while, but you know, you go in, Humiliating. it's like a production line, you do your thing, you get out, and it's like they see a lot of people, they're very impersonal, and you end up hating having to do them. But this was, and I can't remember what it was for, but literally it was just an, a commercial where it was a couple kissing. So just before you went in, you were paired up with someone and you went in and you had to kiss. And I'm pretty sure you would not be able to do this now, right? Yeah. Or probably then, for that matter. <laughs> uh, what kind of commercial are you talking about? Uh, I don't know, a legit commercial, you know. I don't know, Colgate or something. 
Um, and uh, yeah, that was weird. In retrospect, you know, I was desperate for a job, so I just went in and did it. But You're really desperate to kiss people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I got a good one though, so it was all right. I was kissing it. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I think actually that was quite uncomfortable. Yeah. Do you okay with that? Yeah. Do you feel uncomfortable? Do you feel no. com no. You're comfortable. No. All right. Let's see what we can do about it. I think, but I think the joy, the joy of, of getting to, you know, live in other other people's skins as a living, um, there's like there's something. Me, I, I, you can't, you can't, you can't be uncomfortable with that. Like you have to be comfortable. I think, uh, you know, because with, without judgment and yes. you know, like you have yeah. to. Yes, comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's the, the joy of, of, of being able to, to illuminate the, the human experience or the not human experience. <laughs> uh, uh, but like, but leaving myself anyway, uh, and, and sort of three dimensionalizing someone else's experience, and and uh, that's fun <laughs> to me. So you know, if you were playing a historical character who like no one likes. For, for legitimate reasons, then you have to get over that uncomfortableness yeah. yourself, don't you? Yeah, because they're human, and 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 in order to tell that story or to to, to you know uh, tell the best story, like the, you know, like you, you got to get in there and not because they don't think that they're bad. No. You know? like, they think that you know. But look up an eye. Yeah. 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 I mean, in, in in his relationship with Einstein, and like the the you know, and to feel you know. That uh, I mean, what was it Jean Genet, the the French playwright, said the greatest tragedy in life is that every man has his reasons. You know, what I mean, that's everyone thinks they're right. No one walks around thinking, oh man, I'm just I'm just making all kinds of left turns. Every you know, what I mean, no. <laughs> everyone's trying to do their best, and you know, a lot of times uh, uh, people, uh, serial killers, and uh, they have lack of empathy gene. You know what I mean? So, like, what is that about? Like, so if my job is to illuminate the human experience, um, to even if you're playing the most awful person in the world, like, in order for, for that to happen, for, for, for audiences to to really, they, they have to be seen as human. They have to be, you know, they have to, you know, you have to be that close to be like, oh, I, I see, I see how that could happen to that person. Or I see why he did that or she did that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Like their upbringing or whatever. So. Um, and it's a weird, and it's weird to just be that comfortable with discomfort. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you have to get to that point. Maybe. You have yeah. to get to that point, yeah. and that, that takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, See, it's a very unique position. That, yeah, that, um, that, that, this is awesome. Because like, these are the kind of questions I feel like we all have conversations off on the sides. Like, what does it take to be the bad guy? Even though, because you're right, the bad guy doesn't perceive themselves as being the even historical, fictional, you name it, and you're kind of like settling into, like, I have to be comfortable with being just awful mm -hmm. and, and, and being able to present that. Because, like, me as a, as a stage actor and doing like community theater and stuff, there's just a sense of the, that you're early on, you're like, oh yeah, I'm playing the bad guy, it's cool. And you're like, but it's not about perceiving that as a, as a villain, it's finding the authenticity, their truth. And right. just kind of existing within their own personal truth, even if you're doing a historical person or otherwise, trying to determine what that is. And that's why in films too, like it's so much more interesting to watch a movie where you actually like the bad guy because they are so sociopathic or narcissistic or whatever that you're like, damn, they're good. Like yeah. I, I, I don't want them to get caught. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's because, a yeah, there's there's a humanizing of something yeah. of some sort, connectivity. The trick, the, yes. the trick, the trick though is. Being able to separate, you know, like I mean, you look at Heath Ledger, right, mm. and and what happened, uh, like the and like the schedule that, <laughs> that that they're on, and like you're doing night shoots and you're shooting 16 hour, 17 hour days, and of, of of in a 24 hour period, and like you're doing whatever you can do, you know, pain meds or whatever, but like you just kind of lose yourself, yeah. and I, you know, like I struggle with this notion of method. Uh, acting because I, I, I can't really afford to I mean unless I'm you know by myself on a job in my you know cause, but I, at the end of the day I still have to come back and report back to my family I have to call my children I have to I can't just I mean in a way so I struggle with is it selfish to be because I you know you, you read about like what was it Michael B. Jordan when he was doing uh, Killmonger he 
he uh, he didn't speak or see his family for I don't know nine months or something crazy like that. Yeah. And if that's what it takes to you know to be in that lay in that zone, okay. I mean, I'm not. I don't know. There's no right answer here, but I'm just. I think saying. everybody's process is different. I like yeah. leaving it at the door. I get to I mean, it's full, exhausting. full immersion yeah, exactly. in the moment, yeah. and then I go home and yeah. I have a life. Because I think yeah. that like it can be so it's exhausting as it is. Let alone if you're carrying that with you. I don't find it to be necessary no. to yeah. to to stay in. Because I think that like it's important to have the balance of what you're you know. Not, 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 not what you do, but who you are. Yes. And, and if what you're doing uh, overtakes who you are, then what's the, what's the point? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, I don't know. And you just become a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I think Maggie Smith of Downton Abbey fame, um, older, you know, the Duchess, sort of, was working with a very young Kenneth Branagh, and I think he was being very method with his job. And um, she said, um, have you tried acting, love? <laughs> <laughs> That's always quite good. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to leave it at the door. Leave it at the door. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to do another uh, D20 roll. You guys probably, I know it's a weird gimmick. We're kind of trying that out. Where did the D20 end up? Is it flight? Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Feel free to toss it around. I know we're, we're kind, of, kind of blending things. So kind of give it a chuck and let's see what happens. All right, give me a second. All right, keep it going. Three. How's it back? Oh, it's hit the floor. Who is it? You All right. Get, you get up again. Go ahead and roll it. Okay, see what number you got. I know it's a weird gimmick. Bear with me. Nine. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So take it back there. And start, yeah, 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 start, start, start pushing it over this way. And we'll get back to it when we get to it. Number nine is what do you wish that you had placed at a time capsule 15 years ago? <laughs> 15 years ago, what was the most important thing to you? Bitcoin. <laughs> A lot of Bitcoin. <laughs> yes. Of anything. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Something yeah. meaningful, I think. Okay, right. Well, something yeah. meaningful. Like, yeah, yeah. Cash out. Yeah. Um, well, you God, I don't know. So rich. Uh, I wish I would have kept all my clothes from the 90s. That's what I would have wished. Like me now, it's like everything's popular again. I'm like, shit. <laughs> yes. Like the mom jeans and, you know, just. What was your, what was your go to fashion in the 90s then? Was it just the mom jeans or did you go all out? Were you one of the, the young punk emo blending kids at the turn of the century? Where, what were you rocking in the 90s? No, in the 90s, I was definitely like Joker necklace. All right, the, right. You know, more of like I the you Blossom Joker. world of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, friends, I like I liked the like, little belly shirts with oh, the blue eyes. Crop tops. Yeah, they yeah. just never looked good on I me, think, but like yeah. I thought they did. Do you remember yeah. the 90s? There was like a the 70s free. like retro thing. What? The 70s came back in the 90s. I was wearing flares at one point. But the, 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 the 90s was like a regurgitation of the 70s, and now it's a regurgitation of the 90s. So it's like it just keeps yeah. evolving into its own thing. Yeah, yeah. What are we going to get? So 20 years from now, we're going to get this. What's this? What are you looking at me like this for? Wait, this is Rehash 90. So you know in 20 years' time, we're going to get Rehash, so rehash 90. Well, I, I mean, I'm not. I'm looking at that guy's Spaceball shirt, which, by the way, is a fantastic film. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I hope that people remember that movie. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, some kids, you're like, do you know who mm. Warren Beatty is? And they're like, huh? Right. Who? The guy that did that thing at the Oscars? I'm like, oh my god. Oh, that's right. Have a good day. I know. Yeah. Wait, were they on TikTok? It's, it's interesting to see, see how like the media cycles through and, and older films. I'm seeing older now, that hurt. But like, to look at like musical theater, like Wicked is a very popular show, right? And I just saw it for the first time recently, and to know that it's based on what it's based on. But how many newer, younger generations are actually watching that? Right. Right. Like, we're all aware of The Wizard of Oz, the novel and the old movie, but, like, are we still watching it, or are we just talking about it? Mm. Is that a part of the conversation that are we're Are they still having? showing to their kids? You know, yeah, exactly. Is that yeah. still evolving the time? That's actually a really good question. Do we have to open the time capsule? You don't have to. Does anyone have to? Well, you yeah. want it to be something... Well, I was just to say Donald Trump, right? maybe. <laughs> <laughs> 
You just ship them to some Fifteen years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bury it. Yeah. What about you, Bruce? Charlie, you got me thinking about Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a chance to take him out. I could have, like, I know this. <laughs> You did. You did. I had a chance to kill him. Right, you did. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I blew it. <laughs> he still beats wow. himself up over it. Uh, okay. And I was like, yeah, this, that'd be so funny. Like, just think about the rewrite history. Like, he was walking out of this restaurant in New York, and he, you know, like, normally when you're out, when you are inside a place and someone's outside, what do you do? If you're, if you're outside a place and they're inside a place, what do you do? You let them out, and then you go in. There's more room outside than the room inside. And this Joker just, just not only almost knocked me over, but like I'm standing there holding the door, and it doesn't even acknowledge that I'm holding the door for. And it's like if I had a shank right now, <laughs> like, like straight Joe Pesci on his butt. <laughs> But then imagine like the world, right? This, this, right. I love this science fiction, right? So imagine like I guess I would just be in prison and some guy you know, who, killed, who yeah. killed some white guy. That's what I would. That's what I would be. We would never know. Like, the, the, yeah. yeah. I think this was before. Uh, no, this is this is actually no. I take that back. This was after like the you know Central Park Five and like the so people be put. I mean, maybe I'd like you know have like. Be living like the Goodfellas in prison, you know, cutting garlic with razor blades. <laughs> <laughs> but like people putting those stuff on my books and sending me Christmas cards. Thank you so much. For yeah, the Philippine statue. See, somewhere. this is how my mind works. I was totally thinking about something else. You brought this up. Okay. <laughs> capsule, time capsule. Uh, time time capsule. capsule. Well, well. Okay, time capsule. Time capsule. Mm. Oh man. Fifteen years. Fifteen-ish. Fish. Fifteen years. Make it a solid twenty. Make it look to twenty. Wait, fifteen years ago from now. Yes. Behind us. Behind you. Behind you. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. 20 years Weird ago. Phrase it's ago. too early to do math, guys. Let's be real. <laughs> what year was that? 2003. 2003? So 20 years ago. 20 years, yeah, 20 years ago. So it's 20 years ago. Yeah. Who said 2003? Well, I said I rounded to 20. So now we're in yes. a conversation about math. Thank you. It's easier that way. 2003 to 2008. How about that? Yeah. yeah. The odds. Was there anything that was like specific for you, like technology-wise, or just some kind of geeky, not even geeky thing that was just like important to you in the well, time I, I, It's pretty creepy, but um, that's on brand. I, I, kinda, uh, <laughs> I, 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 lived, I went to uh, to grad school in New Haven, Connecticut. And I don't know if any of you have ever been there, but it's mm -hmm. most haunted, one of the most haunted places mm -hmm. uh, in the world. And uh, I had this huge safe in my basement. Like it was a five foot cube, five foot tall, five foot in combination lock. And, uh, and, but it was broken. And so no one, and this safe was, it had to weigh, I don't know, like, I don't know. It was so heavy that it, the wheels sunk down into the floor. It was really, really old. But I know that there was something in that safe that was haunting my house. And um, if I could put that in a time capsule and be able to open it now, uh, Probably wouldn't, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not opening mine either, so that's fine. No. Maybe if Donald Trump isn't there, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> time capsules aside, I want to take another audience question here. This time from uh, Ayla and Jeff. Um, we just had our first child and are away for the first time from the little one. As actors, we know you are away from your families a lot. So, what advice do you have being away from the family and dealing with missing them? Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Yes. And I'm glad you're all in here right now for escaping for the first time. Oh, we're there. All the way over there. Awesome. Thank you. Aww. She's gone. Missing She's it. gone home. <laughs> Missed the village. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. Well, Peter, what do you think? Yeah, you, Peter, you have two children. Yeah, go on for it. What was it like? Uh, what was that show? Um, City on the Hill, I believe, with Kevin Bacon. Oh, uh, yeah. And he, uh, he said something really profound. He's like, having a child is like having an open wound in like in your chest that just never you know it's just it, it's it's i miss you know i cannot stand to be away from my little guys and um so i, I what i try to do uh because i was i was just in australia uh for six months and that's the longest Ooh. i've been away from them and but i came home a couple of times but you know you, i just want to be there for every every, you know, and you can't, you know, because it's like you have to, 
So I try to instill uh, in myself and in them like a sense of adventure, right? Like, so, you, you know, they're going to come here tomorrow, right? Because I live 30 minutes away from here. And, uh, you know, like, it's a staycation. So, like, try to, and, you know, thank God for FaceTime. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how people did it when it was rotary dial. Right? <laughs> you know, you just, well, oh, Daddy's going to go get some milk. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, I've heard that one a lot. Because you, you do FaceTime quite a lot with kids when we're on set. Okay. Well, yeah, 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 and now they're just so so, so tech savvy that you know, like I was on the phone, with, like on the Facetime with my son on the way down here, and you know, it's just, it, it's, you know, it, it just, I don't know, it's, it sucks. But then, you know, like the the long term is that you know, we, 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 like my 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 seven year old, eight seven year old, uh, he was six weeks old, and I, you know, went to Ireland to, to work and then. And uh, so he's got like, you know, an expired passport. Like he's got his other second passport, which is dope, you know. But so like, I hope that like, I guess in the future when they're, you know, growing up that all of the, it'll all mean something, you know what I mean? But it, it, it sucks, there's no way around it. Like I know that like Denzel Washington, when he was filming, I think uh, the Steve Biko movie in South Africa, he would literally fly home to Los Angeles from, uh, I think they were shooting in, in Cape Town or they were shooting in, so I don't, I don't know, anyway, South Africa. Um, and he was spending, like, so they were shooting Monday through Friday, and he would be on the plane, get, like, get the whole weekend. So you get home, mm -hmm. I love you, bye. <laughs> you know, like, like and uh, Alfred Woodard, when we were doing a show on Broadway, she's like, I have a three week rule. Like, I, I'm, I'm never gonna be away from my family for more than three weeks. And so she would fly them, you can do this when you have money, but like fly them, uh, you know, wherever to be with her but it's a it's a it's a trip it's a trip it's it's uh it's tricky in all ways tricky. too like having relationships relationships you know like they suffer because again yeah. like there are people who don't understand also your schedule sometimes you're okay. yeah sometimes you're working nine months somewhere and you're working monday through friday 16 17 hours a day and yeah on the weekends you're just dead tired yeah. and you just don't have the energy or you're on a plane yeah. or you know and and I think that the thing is just being forgiving of yourself. Like that takes time too. Absolutely. Um, You're forgiving of each other. Forgiving each other. Yes. Yeah. I was. I was kept in a. We. We were. Oh, I can't talk about that currently. <laughs> <laughs> I was in LA for the whole of lockdown, basically, because um, if I left, I couldn't come back in with the visa that I had at the time. Uh, so I was away from my family. I didn't see my family for that amount of time. My husband. Um, was able to come for three months at a time on a, a, a tourist visa, um, but he was having to come through Turkey because we, with the travel ban, we'd figured out that if he spent two weeks in Turkey, he could then fly into the States. So he was doing two weeks in Turkey by himself to come to see me for three months and then blah, blah, blah. And then Turkey banned flights from the UK, so then that shut And for a, a period, we, we were thought, I don't know when we're going to see each other again. I, I think a lot of people had this during you know, COVID, so it's pretty scary. Uh, but again, I think you're right, being forgiving of each other, like giving each other the benefit of the doubt, trying to have a conversation every day, and actually, I think we all found this during COVID, God, those conversations were really boring, because you were like, I've done nothing, and you've done nothing. And... Yeah, <laughs> we need to do that. Right. <laughs> right. time. Yeah. How many times are we going to make this thing? Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, things like that. Perseverance, I yeah. suspect, is, is one of the key to it seems like the current thread that I'm hearing to you is like make, making sure your time is intentional. Yes. Right, w w whatever time that you have, because like you said, like the lockdown, it hit all of us. Mm -hmm. And we learned the hard way, it's like, we're not promised tomorrow, we're not promised an hour from now. And to make sure that we're having that intentional time with the people that we cherish, the people we love. And also it's important to like, have that intentional time with yourself to give yourself that grace that, and that forgiveness. Yes. And being able to kind of experience that for all of us and kind of translate that into your profession is it must have been just a wild, be like, all right, cool. You're talking about the grind life. The grind ground to a halt and things and you know, kind of a similar situation for your career right now. Do you, the good thing yeah. about that for me is I struggle, maybe you guys struggle yeah. with this too, but it's like sometimes, and most of the time I think I'm a, I think I'm a piece of shit. I'm just like, God, you are just, you know, because you just, you just like, there's this voice, it's just like, the, the thing that drives me to, you know, to want to, you know, yeah. do and strive and be, and then sometimes I'm just like, I, what if I just sit here and do nothing? 
Yeah. Is that okay? Is it okay if I'm just like, if, if I'm not the greatest, if I'm, if I'm if, I know I'm not the worst, but is it okay to just sort of, try, you know, to not try to do, to not try, and I don't mean to like, uh, to, 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 to not, yeah, not care. I just mean, is it, is it, you know, when, 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 when the world sort of stopped and we were collectively uh, in this space of forced uh, introspection, like just to be, to go inside, which I feel like we needed. I mean, I, because it, it, I, I feel like there were benefits to really having to sit and stew in your own juices and like really. You could have shouted, Peter, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I didn't wear pants for like nine months. <laughs> so, I mean, showering. Thank you for wearing them today. Thank you for wearing them today. <laughs> uh, I don't what, know, what we do is just so weird. Like, it yeah. is a weird thing. Because sometimes, like, we don't have choices either. Like, I remember I was doing something and my grandma died. And I was on a, a film and they released me for a day so I could go to her funeral. A day. One day. And that was being generous. Yeah. Because they had a tight schedule, tight schedule and it's yeah. a lot of money that's being spent. So you are, you're, yes, you're a human, but you're not bigger than that project to people. Yeah. So it's like, that's also what's kind of odd about our jobs. It's like, that's where I think the intentional thing comes in. Because yeah. it's like, nobody else is going to care, so we have to, mm. about those moments. Because our time is very limited. It's mainly on set, sometimes in a trailer, but mainly, you know. In that space. In that space. Yeah. So it's, it is very difficult to maintain relationships. Yeah. You're constantly having to shift your weight around because you have this tight line, this tight thing. And even like when, like throughout the year, like you're doing appearances and stuff like that, like you're still maintaining that kind of schedule here. Like that's why I was like, if you weren't working, how could you relax, you know? And so making sure you find that time. What is like the biggest thing when you guys do have time and you are giving yourself that grace and that freedom to be like, you know what? I'm gonna do a thing for myself. I'm, I'm on set, I'm in the trailer. What's your kind of go to reconnect with your self activity? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did talk about the Cinemax. <laughs> you get that in your trailer. Yeah. Okay. I know people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll just say my last point though. Um, you know, our, our family do quite enjoy it when we go away for a bit. You know, it it gives them a break sometimes. Yeah. But, um, a little bit. But in, tra in a trailer, I, I don't know. I what's... like being in the trailer. Yeah. yeah. I, I, like, I like talking to people. Yeah. So I'm really genuinely usually on set talking to the crew. Being there. Yeah. Just there is a lot of trailer stories. waiting time on this show. Yeah. yeah, we're all hanging I mean, out. Yeah. We get I show. mean, this is the tightest cast probably I've ever worked with. I mean, like, yeah. we, would, we would go to work and then on Saturday we'd all have dinner. Yeah. Like, yeah. Aww. that was our entire first season. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, that's such a cool experience and especially when we all lived in LA because I feel like that's actually harder when you're on a location somewhere it's like you know you're at camp so like people's families are not there and whatever so you're always having drinks or you're going out to eat whatever I think in LA it's harder because it's so spread out yeah. and everybody has their families and we still hang out you know hmm. it was just it's like that's such a cool very rare scenario I like, I like the camp analogy there because like growing up again doing community theater that's kind of the vibe it's like we had a saying in our old community theater days it's like yeah the, the play was just an excuse for us to be with our friends to go out and have the drinks to have the social time well yeah. art always is just yeah. play, isn't it you know that's, yeah. that's a good get, get yeah. together do something fun create something yeah and just and keep paying that towards civilization it. yeah <laughs> and this is camp to me like yeah. you know, these guys we all live in different cities and right. countries yeah. So like yeah. I get to I get to see my family. Colin's we get together, which is nice. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the family reunion kind of aspect. Yes. <laughs> I don't, and, and I will say because you know we're bypassing you know certain conversations, but it's like in the time that you guys have been together now, like seeing your experience as a as a spectator, watching you guys grow as a family on the outside, like you can go to any of your panels, watch any of your stuff online, like you guys are a tight loving core. Was that a fun, like, realization when you all kind of gotten together and you're like, oh, hell yeah. Oh, we're good. Here's the cool thing yeah. about, about, really quickly, yeah. about, about creating, like, uh, something from the beginning. 
right? Yeah. So, like, a, a lot of us, uh, <clears throat> you know, you go onto a show that's already been rolling for how many seasons or whatever, and you're kind of just like a hired gun, and, like, the, the, the tone uh, of the show is already set, and you just have to kind of go in and do it. The cool thing about uh, being with the show from its inception, its origin, is we get to set. So, so I, you know, I, I would go into a uh, makeup trailer for, for whatever, the, like as a guest star, right? And like, you know, just like, it was just kind of like oogie and like people just like, whatever, the, I just am, am invisible, right? Mm -hmm. And I just feel like, oh, so I was like, if I ever get the opportunity to to be a, um, crazy ass calling me right now, uh, <laughs> like, uh, be, uh, to set the, the tone, right? Like, so everybody's welcome, you know, like we're here, we lo everyone loves to be here, wants to be here, and like, I'm so happy that, you know, when someone will come into the makeup trailer and be like, hey, come in, like, just this, the, 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 to have that uh, authority to say, so I think that that is what helped create, you know, well, it, 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 I mean, these guys are who they are, so like, we just get on, get on my gangbusters, but like, it was just so, for me, amazing and to, to be able to, you know, from the, from the, Day players to the to the background actors to the to the crew, everyone is like, listen, we all want to be here. It's not just like and we're all in like that. And it starts from the top and it goes all the way down. So when guest stars would come into the makeup trailers, you know, we, we welcome them and make them feel good about like, like here's it, it a was, drink. Yeah. Enjoy, you know, like mm -hmm. eat some coffee or like you know, like what's your story? <laughs> like, coffee, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I meant. <laughs> Water. <laughs> Above all professional on this show. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, and I think that, like, that's what made it unique, or makes it unique, uh, is that we, you know, I think we, we have a, a, a genu genuine and a, 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 a synergy that, that, that is um, in common. Like, I think that we, we love what we do as much as each other. Like, I love the craft. And I love working with people who love the craft. Yeah, you know yeah and I think it was all, uh, you know, the tightness that you're talking about was also forged through hard work. I mean, the first season, we were calling 14, 15, 17 six hour days. And, <laughs> you know, you thought you were going mad at, at certain points, but together you got through it. So, you know, it's very similar to theatre like that. You know, it's very intense, hard work, um, and, but you get results. And if you get results from hard work, then it, it's addictive, isn't it? We're in the trenches together. Yeah. Yeah. Trenches, war, yeah. <laughs> That's it. God, those, those, yeah, you know, getting home at dawn type thing. Oh, yeah. That was hard. Yeah. But yeah, we got through it. Yeah. It got better. <laughs> we met each other. Yeah, we did. And it's still really awesome. awesome. Yeah. It sets a, we it's still, we're still on a chain, like, I mean, all of us. We, we text every week. I mean, Constantly. Yeah. And that's, that's weird, too. <laughs> 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 it's not over yet. It's not yet. So try oh. to figure out how to turn those notifications off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll always know when Peter's drunk, though. <laughs> I find it very hard to tell, actually. That's what I was about to say. It's when he goes eight o'clock. There's Peter. Here. He's on the floor somewhere right now. I'm just wandering around. Is that where he's been? Yeah, he's history. Yeah. 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 In order to, uh, we're coming close to the end of time, so I want to do like one more with the roll of D20. And we're going to ask a couple more questions. So where did the D20 end up? Is it somewhere, anywhere, somewhere over here? He's going to just start tossing it, and, tossing it, and I'm going to I'm going to say stop, mm -hmm. and we're going to see who's got it. Thank you for being considerate. I know it's weird. All right, three, put your weight on it, watch your head, and stop it. Who's got it? Hold it, or not, off the rails. All right, come on out and roll a number and see what you got. I hope you get a one. Is it a one? 18. Oh, you're so good. Wow. But it's a true Texas chili. There's no beans. No beans? That's so, good. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I like beans. And because Frito pie, like all the people over there, I live in Austin, Texas, yeah, yeah. so I, mean, I have Frito pie nights all the time. Mm -hmm. So we just have a big, you know, big old pot. Big old pot. Serve, serve, serve yourself, yourself kind of thing. You put Fritos on your chili. Okay. 
You don't? Yeah, no, no, I only, well, I only started doing it when I came to the States. Mm -hmm. And it's brilliant. Two places they actually just put it in the Frito bags. Yeah. You can actually do that. It's, it's, like, it's called like a walking taco, taco or something like that. Oh, yeah. They put sour cream, onion, cheese. A walking taco. In, 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 in the UK, we don't have Fritos, so I have to use um, Doritos Cool Original. Fritos? No, we don't have Fritos, but it works. It's quite nice. I highly recommend it. You have them here too, so you can mix it up. Um, Why not nacho cheese? Actually, my mum, if we, if she does, she hasn't done it for a long while, and I need to tell her off about that, because she makes an amazing Mississippi mud pie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has anyone had that, one of those? Yeah. That's an incredible thing. There you go. There you go. Eaten today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ready for lunch. Here we go. Uh, I, I have taken my mother's uh, fried chicken and run amok. <laughs> uh, I, 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 every once in a while, I'll get a bug uh, or an inkling to, uh, to throw down and some, like an egg, my fried chicken is. Mm. My deep fried turkey, however, fail. <laughs> <laughs> The first time I did it, it was amazing. That's the next time, and the time after that, fail. Yeah, like it's very specific. I, you know, I thought, oh, I can find chicken. No, you, you have to have the right amount of, you know, the oil has. It was like the first, like, oh, like yeah. 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 I'll show you how to do it. Like four and a half hours, just like. You deep fry for four and a half hours? No, no, I'm not supposed to. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was, yeah, I wasn't like, giving up. Yeah. So hold on, let's talk about how did it taste? Oh, it, it, I felt like I was in Camelot. <laughs> I felt like it's like it was like boiled in oil turkey. Uh, yeah, it was like I didn't. I, you you could don't care. It, it literally fell apart when you tried to pull it out of the oil, and it was still <laughs> not cooked. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, like yeah, I would prepare this for my worst enemy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that no, was a fail. Don't need that. Don't need that in my life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't. Know, no one does. No. Uh, and so much so I left, I was so disgusted with myself in the fail that I left the pot <laughs> outside for two months. <laughs> Just, it was like that thing I look at it, it's like, you you suck, you yeah. suck. <laughs> and then I opened it finally to clean it, and there was a rat in there. Oh, God. Well, that's why you just threw the thing away. I did. Yeah, that's what I picked yeah. the whole pot up and just threw it away. So that, 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 that was the end of the story. But yeah. Or that was a failure. How did that smell, though? I mean, you were like, it's Well, it was hot. outside. It was like, it wasn't like, you know, right by the door kind of thing, okay. or a big door I get every day, but it was just like I, you know, took it to the Dead far body. corners of right. the house or the backyard and just kind of just. In shame. Just the shame. shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. left it there. Yeah. And I'm like, after a couple of months, I was like, you know what? What are you doing? <laughs> so just clean the. And I got the courage and the nerve to get over myself to go and do it. And, and Surprise, rat! You know? <laughs> Surprise, that's all you found. I right? <laughs> and insult to injury. Like, that's what you get. So, you know. The moral of the story is that clean up after yourself, then? Is that what's going on? Don't right? fry a turkey. Don't fry a turkey. Don't, turkey. Yeah. 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 Don't feel like a failure. Just yeah. get over it. <laughs> yeah. And it's all right if you do. We're still going to eat your turkey. Um, guys, so we're going to wrap up here. It's been a great hour. You guys have a lot more panels throughout the weekend. Uh, you, when are you going to get your tables today? Do you know? Sure. You don't know? Yes. We have the cheat sheet. When are we going to get tables? Yeah, we're going to go, we're gonna go get lunch after this conversation. I think it's like three. Three till five. See, we'll see what happens. Something like that. Fair enough. We'll go down Around to the Walk of Fame. Yeah. And we'll find you guys a little bit later. Yeah. Hope you guys have a great time. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Really, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.